In this video, we're going to talk about the pairwise comparison method of deciding a winner in an election. In the prior videos, we had already solved the plurality method, the board account method, the plurality with elimination, and then the top two instant runoff voting method. So with the compares the pairwise comparison method, here's the here are the steps. Uh, we determine all possible comparisons between any two candidates. And then we're going to determine the winner for each of the comparisons. And then the candidate with the most wins, the most head-to-head -head wins, is the winner. So let's use the pairwise comparison method to determine the candidate um, the, the winner for the election for the math club president election. So the first step is to um, determine all of the head-to-head -head matches or comparisons between the candidates. And one useful way of figuring out the comparisons, all the different comparisons, is just to draw like a little bit of a, you know, a map like this and just map it out. So for example, uh, we can compare um, uh, Anna to Bob, right? Or, and we can compare Anna to Cora and then Anna to Dan. So we, the first one would be Anna, Anna versus Bob, A versus B, and then A versus C, and then A versus D. Okay, now let's look at uh, Bob. Well, for Bob, we already made the comparison between Anna and Bob, A and B, so we're not, we don't need to do that anymore. We can then do Bob to Cora and then Bob to Dan. So we can do Bob to Cora and Bob to Dan. So that would be B versus C and B versus D. And for Cora, we already made the comparison between A and C and B and C. So the only one we need to do is C and D. All right, so C versus D. And that looks like that covers everything because uh, uh, Dan has already been compared to all th of the three other candidates as well, right? Or we've already considered those comparisons. Okay, now let's go, let's do the head to head and see how they compare with each other. So, for example, uh, for Anna and Bob, let's start tabulating their, their votes or who, who wins in each of the matchups. Uh, for each of the piles. So for this pile, um, Anna was more highly ranked. So 14 times. So Anna gets 14 points there. Uh, for this pile, uh, Bob is more highly ranked, received more highly ranked values than Anna. So Bob beat Anna out in these 10 ballots. So Bob gets 10 points there. And then for this pile, Bob beats out Anna again, and there's eight ballots there. Uh, for this pile, Bob beats Anna again for four of those ballots. And then finally, uh, for this uh, pile, Bob beats Anna again, and he gets one point there. So you can add it up if you'd like, but clearly Bob is the winner, right? Anna only has 14, whereas Bob has this much, which is 23. So Bob is the winner of for the head-to-head -head, um, matchup between Bob, uh, Anna, and Bob. All right, and it's a good idea. I should have done this. Just put these lines here just to make it a little bit cleaner. And let's do that. Okay, so for the matchup between Anna and Cora, so A versus C, well, we can make this pretty simple, and we can just say that the only pile where Anna is uh, beats everybody is just this first pile. So Anna gets these 14, and then um, in all the other pile, Anna's the last place. So all the other piles, the other candidates going to get um, the, the rest of the 30, uh, 23 votes, right? So we can just say, we can just go ahead and just put the 23 here. So Cora is the winner here. And very similarly, 
um, for between Anna and um, Dan, Anna gets 14 and Dan gets 23. So Dan wins that match. Uh, FYI, if there's a tie between two, um, if one of the match has a tie, then each of the candidate gets uh, a point. I'm sorry, gets half a point. And that's another thing. For each of the winner, every time you win a match, a head-to-head, -head, you get one point. So, for example, um, Bob gets one point here. Cora gets one point here. Oops. And then Dan gets a point here. But what I was uh, saying earlier, um, just before that, if there's a tie between in, in a match, they split that one point, so they each get uh, 0.5 points. All right, so between Bob and Cora, let's go ahead and see what how they match up. So for the first pile, uh, it looks like Bob beats out Cora, so Bob gets these 14 points for the first pile. In the second pile, Cora beats out Bob, so he, Cora gets 10 points. In the third pile, Cora beats out Bob again, so Cora gets 8 points. And then for the uh, this pile, Bob beats out Cora, so Bob gets the four points here. And then for the last pile, uh, Cora beats out Bob, so Cora gets one point. So let's total up these points, see what they get. So Bob gets 18 points, uh, and Cora gets um, 19 points. So Cora wins this match, so Cora gets one point for this match. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. So the next matchup is Bob versus um, Dan. So B and D. So uh, for this first pile, Bob beats out Dan. So Bob gets 14 points. For the next pile, Bob beats out Dan again. So Bob gets 10 points. And you, if you... You can stop right here if you don't want to do the rest of the math. How do I know that? Bob, and I know Bob's going to win. How do I know that? Because 14 plus 10 is 24, and that's more than the majority. That's more than half already. So we know that uh, Bob is definitely the winner and that Bob's going to get a point. But just for the sake of it, let's just finish up the matchup. So we have 14 plus 10 uh, for the third uh, pile. Uh, Dan beats Bob. Dan gets 8 points. And then for this pile, uh, Bob beats Dan, so Bob gets four points. And then the last pile, um, Dan beats out Bob, so Dan gets one point. So for this round, for this head-to-head -head matchup, um, Bob gets 28 points, and um, Dan gets seven points. I'm sorry, nine points. Okay, uh, and then the last matchup, we have uh, Core versus Dan. So we have Core versus Dan. Let's go ahead and do the head-to-head -head matchup. Let's zoom out like that so we can see the whole thing. All right, so for the first pile, for the first pile, we have um, Cora is the winner. So Cora gets these 14 points. Uh, for this pile, um, Cora beats out Dan. So Cora gets 10 points. And it's very similar, similar to what we did in this round. We know Cora is going to be the winner because she's obtained more than the majority, more than half. So Cora is the winner here. Again, if you want to, you can just continue on if you'd like. So this pile, Dan beats out Cora. So Dan gets 8 points. And then for this one, Dan beats out Cora. Dan gets 4 points. And for the last one, Cora beats out Dan. So Cora gets 1 point. So if you want to total this, you'd get, let's see, that would be 25, and this would be 12. All right, so now let's see how many points each of the uh, candidates got. So A gets, uh, A didn't beat anybody, so A is at zero. Uh, Bob, B gets, let's see, we got one, two, and C ha is, um, you get one, two, three. And then D, Dan. Dan, in the head-to-head -head matchup, Dan won, wins 
uh, just one time. So Dan gets one point. All right, so in the pairwise comparison method, it looks like C is the winner. So in this method, Dan is the winner. So the last thing um, concept in this section is something called a um, concept or a term called the Condorcet, Condorcet candidate. So a candidate preferred by a majority when the candidates are compared in a head-to-head -head comparison is a Condorcet candidate. So take note, this is the candidate who is preferred by the majority, by a majority in a head-to-head -head comparison, right? So when you compare them head-to-head -head like we did with the uh, pairwise comparison and the person who has um, the majority um, would be the Condorcet candidate. And one last note is the pairwise comparison chooses the Condorcet candidate. So the winner of the pairwise comparison uh, is the Condorcet candidate. All right, so that's it for uh, this section or for, this, um, uh, for the pairwise comparison method. Uh, so this is the last um, voting method of what we've been looking at. So I just wanted to briefly recap all of the voting methods. So we started with the plurality method, right? And the plurality method is the winner is the candidate with the most first place votes. Uh, and then we talked about the board account method, and that's where each place, whether you get first place, second place, third place, fourth place, and so on, each place on uh, is assigned uh, points, uh, first place being the highest and then going down one. Uh, and then you, uh, the candidate with the highest total is the winner. And then the plurality with the elimination is where you have rounds, right? And in each round, we want to count uh, the first place votes for each candidate. And uh, we eliminate the candidate with the fewest first place vote in each of the rounds, right? Until we, we repeat the rounds until the candidate obtains, one candidate obtains a majority vote. And then we looked at the top two um, instant runoff voting method. And that's where we eliminate all but the top two candidates. The, the top two candidates with the, first, with the most first place votes, they come, uh, we, we compare the two. Um, to see if uh, to see who gets the most uh, points, and then finally in this video we talked about the pairwise comparison. Uh, so the first step with the pairwise is we consider all the possible comparisons between two candidates, uh, you know the, all the head-to-head -head comparisons, and then we determine in each of those head-to-head -head comparisons who is the winner. Uh, we assign one point for the winner. If it's a tie, we give we split the one point. Each gets 0.5. And then finally, we tabulate um, how many points they have. Uh, and so in, in essence, how many of the matches do they win? And the candidate with the most wins uh, is the winner. So hopefully you found that helpful. Again, as always, if you have any questions, please uh, shoot me an email.